Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is The Three Laws of Robotics by Floodgate Games. In The Three Laws of Robotics, every player is going to get a faction card that they are not going to be able to see, much like another blind man bluff style game. You're gonna put this on your forehead or in front of you so that everybody can see your card but yourself. You're also gonna get a security key and of course a player reference card. There's also an additional deck of cards that are called Laws of Robotics that will change the way the game is played and what you are allowed to do and not allowed to do. Once you've got in your specific roll card along with their number, you're then going to ask a question everybody will have a chance to do so, a yes or no question around the board. Is my number the highest of my faction? Are there more factions that you see that are also in play that are mine? Anything like that that is a yes or no question you can ask. It'll go around the tabletop and then finally, you're going to give, based on the uh, players going first, your keys in a clockwise motion to players. Players can choose to give more than one key, all their keys, none of their keys, they can choose to keep them, and players can also deny keys. I don't want your key for one reason or another. After all, players have had a chance to distribute their keys, everybody's going to reveal what cards they have, and if the player on the faction has the highest number and is the only person with keys, they'll score points. If they're the only faction in play that is, is currently there, usually a five player game, uh, you're going to score points. And then if your faction has the most keys, you can score an additional point. Points are cards that can be anywhere from one, two, or I believe even three points. And uh, at the end of the fourth round, the player with the most points is the winner. Now, of course, don't forget to follow the rules because if you don't follow the rules, you're going to score these little errors or you, you can have to make score an error and that is going to benefit them in some way as well. At the end of the fourth round, who has the most points, winner. All right, let's take a look at the three laws of robotics and everything included and then we'll go down below and show you the game. So here we have the game The Three Laws of Robotics by Floodgate Games and everything included or at least what I've got to show you. Uh, in which case I set it up for four players but it can go up to eight players in the game and when you add more players you're going to add a, another faction as well as the fives. In a four player game you're simply going to choose two factions ranked one through four. If you had a fifth player you're going to add another faction ranked one through four. Six is the same then seven goes to all of the cards so on and so forth. That just adds the variety of the different things that can be found in the game as far as factions and numbers go. Every player's got the security key, which is going to be trying to be passed around the player that has the highest number of your faction. And then, of course, it's got your little uh, card here reference that tells you how to play the game, the quick setup and the turns. Set aside the laws. If you're playing a simple basic game, there's four rounds. In the first round, there's no laws. The second round, there's one. The third round, there's two laws. And then the final fourth round has three laws. But if you don't want to play the basic game, you can simply add a lot to start the game off. It just makes it a little more fun, a little more entertaining. Uh, after everybody has gotten a chance to shuffle what cards are supposed to be in the deck, all these different factions, you shuffle them up and deal them all face down to each player. Then each player is going to take that card into their hand and place it on their head like so, kind of like Blind Man's Bluff, in which you're going to be trying to uh, then deduce around the room what everybody else has. Your objective is to, of course, have the faction with the highest number, but if you don't, you can still win by making sure that all the security keys of your faction go to the player that is of your faction that has the highest number. Uh, you've got your laws over here. You've got victory points. That is just a big stack that you're going to shuffle as well. They're numbered one through three. So even if you don't have the most cards, you can still win the game regardless. Set aside the rest of the different factions and uh, numbers, as well as the keys and, of course, the uh, additional uh, explanation cards. Then you're pretty much ready to go. You've got these little uh, tokens here that are going to be utilized for when people make errors and select a player randomly to be the first player or the starting player. After that, you're ready to play the game. So I'll go ahead and show you down below. Select like I stated above, this is a setup for four players. If you wanted to include more players, you would simply include another faction as well as the numbers one through four. And then more players will include these numbered five cards. All the rest of the cards are shuffled and dealt out. Everybody's got their security key and their cards here. And you're ready to begin the round. We just won't play with the first law. We'll just explain the game how it works. But you're not going to get to see this card if this is your specific card. I'm going to flip them all over, though, just to give you guys an idea of how the game is played. And uh, just remember that the cards are supposed to be, supposed to be hidden from you. So if you're this player, you don't get to know that you're the Android number three. And clockwise from the starting player, which will be this guy here, you get to ask a question. And that question is going to be a yes or a no question. Uh, because you're trying to get the uh, highest person, uh, you want to get the high person in your faction to get all the keys. So for instance, this player knows that all three players here are androids and also that this is the highest one. The only question is, is this player, uh, 
the same as the rest of them. So a question that he'd probably ask is, does my faction match the rest of the fact the, 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 the factions that you see? And then you could ask any player he wants. Maybe he'll ask this one here and this player would be yes or no. You can lie in this game when being asked a question though. So it might be in your best interest to lie, it might not be. And because nobody knows what they are specifically, they might specifically think that they're definitely not gonna be one of the other, uh, this same faction, right? Because how, how likely would it be? Not very likely. And so which is gonna happen, everybody's gonna ask questions, whether, hey, at this point I might ask uh, this player here, am I the highest number you see? And he might say yes. And then he might say, um, uh, am I the lowest number? He might say, this might player might say yes, and so on and so forth. Everybody asks their question, and then the starting player will then give keys off. He's gonna go, hmm, I'm probably likely gonna be the player that has the, uh, that is the separate faction because everybody else here is an android, so I'm probably not an android, right? This player knows that he is uh, the highest number, so he'll probably keep his, and he'll probably keep his. And this player, maybe he uh, figure out the right thing. He might pass this to the, his key to this player, in which this player says, yeah, I'll take your key. And this player might say, mm, I'll also pass this, okay? And after everybody's passed, then everybody's going to reveal and show themselves off. And everybody's going to be like, oh, wow, there's all of the exact same uh, character here. And the way it scores is pretty simple. If the highest number of the faction has all the keys, you're going to score points. If not, you get no points, in which case in this round, nobody scores any points, actually. Now, for instance, though, if this player uh, was that character here, the AI number four, and he happened to have his key here, uh, this player would actually score a point because he is the only player of that faction and he has all of the keys of that faction's type. In the rules here, it tells you basically how you're going to be scoring points, and there's a couple different variations. Uh, for instance, uh, on the back here, it tells you if you're playing a five player or more game, uh, the members of a scoring faction with the most security keys gets an additional point. So in which case a five player game, it's very likely there's gonna be two factions that are going to win. And if that's the case, the one that has the most keys is going to get points. In addition, if there's a player as the only member of their faction and they have two or more security keys, they'd score an extra point as well. So for instance, if this player thought that he was on his team, he might want to give that key to him. And if, it, if the game ended like this, this player would actually take two points. Uh, and also if the game ended like this, uh, he would actually also have uh, the most keys in the Android faction, so everybody would actually score a point as well. So that's kind of how it works. After that, everybody's going to give back their, uh, they're going to keep all their points, and they're going to give back their keys so that everybody has a singular key, and they're going to take these factions here for the next round and shuffle them all up again. Hopefully not everybody's going to get the same exact faction once again. We'll see how that works, though. And then everybody's going to get dealt a new faction that they can go ahead and uh, try and figure out what they are. The next thing, which is really interesting, is these laws. A law is going to come out for the second round, and this one says here that players must keep their non-thumb fingers together. So the entire game, they have to do this. So that is a law that must be followed. If somebody doesn't follow this law, somebody else can call them out on it, and they can call an error. Errors are going to give you victory points in the game uh, in some way, shape, or form. They're going to be helpful, and they're going to hurt players uh, that are getting called errors on them. Errors can actually make you lose points and whatnot as well. Uh, this one here is uh, players must say data received whenever they are given a card. <laughs> if they don't do that, that's an error. A file management, players must say checking database before answering any query. So there is different laws, and they all do different things. Some are must, some are maze. They, 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 they function some way to kind of mess with players throughout this bluff game. And then of course you have a new set where everybody's looking at everybody else's cards here. Everybody starts asking questions again. Uh, there's a different ones at least. Here's an AI. Uh, and, and the player who has the most victory points going clockwise will be the first player. So if he had two cards and nobody else had any cards, for instance, uh, he would be the next starting player, in which case he's going to start asking questions around the table and everybody else will do the same and then start passing their keys around the table. And based on where the keys go is where victory points will be scored. You'll keep doing this for two more rounds, in which case two of these cards will come out for the next round. And then finally three will come out for the last and final fourth round. And whoever has the most victory points in the game, along with any bonus points they might get for these different little uh, error chips is going to win the game the three laws of robotics all right let's come up and i'll tell you what i think about it all right so before we get into this review let's give a couple caveats and the first one is the error tokens the tokens the enforcement tokens the ones you get when you call errors out on other people there's going to be a certain amount in the supply and when you take them uh, into from the supply into your uh, little area here you're going to be scoring victory points scoring a victory point provided you have them in front of you in addition you'll score bonus victory point if you have the most in front of you at the end of the round also if there are none left in the supply you're going to take uh, them from uh, the player or the highest player it works certainly 
certainly going to be taking these away from players. So try not to cause errors, basically, because those are going to give you victory points if you have those little enforcement tokens, which can push you far behind. Um, otherwise, the other thing is more players means more different factions, higher card values, and it changes the game. We'll talk about a couple of these laws here, first of all, like uh, network encryption. Players cannot say you, they, or them. If they do, it's an error. That was a really difficult one. Players can't point. Players can't say other players' names. Players must say message sent after posting a query. So whenever somebody asks a question, you have to say, uh, is my character a uh, three? Message sent. <laughs> and if you don't do that, there's errors. Some of them are well, very weird, like must say virus detected if they're caught erroring. <laughs> <laughs> players cannot smile or frown in this game. That's actually pretty challenging as well. So there's just ways that change the game slightly with just these little extra added cards throughout each round. And the game is basically a bluffing style game in which you're trying to bluff uh, players when they ask you questions and you have the choice to lie or not, but you don't necessarily know if you're on their team or not. So generally players tend to tell the truth because if they get caught in a lie, it might not benefit them specifically if those players are on the same team and they need to work together. So listening to everybody's question is definitely going to help you. Being the first person to ask a question is probably the least beneficial. So that's usually why the player with the most points is going to be the first player to ask a question. But at the same time, uh, having a lot of information might hurt you, depending on the type of questions asked. There's a lot of different questions you can ask for yes or no questions in this game. And just because necessarily you think you know what you have doesn't necessarily mean that you do know what you have. And it does change. Sometimes I've asked questions in this game that completely threw me off from the original people asking questions because players can lie. And I go, okay, Michael has lied every time somebody has asked him a question. I've asked him a question, he's told me an answer. Did he actually lie to me? It's very likely he did because he's lied to everybody else, but is that necessarily the case? I don't know. Has that really cool aspect of the game. Uh, if this game you couldn't lie, it'd be probably a little less entertaining, but with that extra lying aspect, it's fun, including the fact that sometimes in the game it'll make you lie to players with these cards. And so you'll go, okay, well, he lied to me, I know that for a fact, but is he lying to me because he has to, because I'm an android, or is he lying to me just to throw me off? So it can get pretty intense. Now this game is a family game, or maybe even a kids style game, but it has that more strategic element for players who are really invested in the hobby. It can get pretty intense depending on the questions that are asked. When you're playing with a lot of younger people, it's probably a little easier to go through. Playing with the older people, that's when it can get a little more uh, stronger, so a little more intense, I should say. So it's great. You can play with pretty much anyone on the spectrum, provided you like a blind man's bluff style guessing game, provided you enjoy the artwork, which I really like. I like the androids. It's, it's just enough for what is needed for this game. The laws add that extra element of changing the game every single time you play, with give, giving a lot of replayability, as well as an incentive to follow the laws, because if you don't, you're going to suffer problems. Uh, I like it. Uh, everything is really fun about this game. I enjoy it. I like playing it with more than four players, because it adds that extra... The extra faction in the game, which makes it more fun. Like, am I really the only android? Am I really the only AI? Another thing to note too is these victory points. The one probably critique I'd probably give this game is there's numbered one through three in here. And when you take victory points, depending on how well you did in the game, you're going to draw it, put it face down. It could be one, two, or three points. So at the end of the game, if you have eight cards, you might still lose to a player who only has five cards because they maybe got all the threes. If you didn't like that aspect because it makes it more random, which is good for kids because it gives people a chance to catch up and whatnot, but if you don't like that, you can simply remove these and just use a singular point for every time you get a point, making it a little more uh, straightforward as far as who's winning the game and how you want to lie to them. There's two reasons why you'd want to go back or forth, so I can see that being a nice little twist to the game. Overall, really like this game. Really fun little bluffing game. I played this multiple people multiple times, and every time we had a good enjoyable time. It's not too aggressive because you never know if you're trying to help somebody or hurt somebody based on when you don't know the fact you the fact of what you are. And it can also be aggressive. Uh, if you're aggressive, it can be negatively impacting on your ability to score points. So you really have to try and work together as best as you can with players that are most likely not on your team to make sure that you get the best opportunity to score points at the end of the rounds. Fun, enjoyable, great little game. Another solid one from Floodgate Games. Definitely check out the three laws of robotics if this interests you at all down below in the description. 
Hello guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer card game review from Floodgate Games, The Three Laws of Robotics. A lot of fun. This game's enjoyable family fun. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, please. It really does help. We do greatly appreciate it. It's what keeps us going here. Without your support, we probably just, we, we just couldn't do this. As well as taking a look at unfilteredgamer.com, tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We got a ton of stuff going on, on that site, giving away a whole bunch of goodies for you guys. I definitely suggest going ahead and doing a couple quick clicks. We have players that win over and over again because they enter these giveaways and I mean, don't be missing out. Join in on the fun and it also really helps us. If nothing else, you don't have to push those bells and all that if you don't want to, but at least enter those because it really does help us. As well as taking a look at my friends, everythingboardgames.com and The Giveaway Geek. Two great sites that give away a lot of stuff and they help me uh, and the channel quite a bit. So they're definitely worth taking a look at for their vlogs and their giveaways. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, please, please follow the three laws of robotics. You know, with Will Smith and that AI movie, it, it, it's good. It's good. It's a good movie. If you, you should watch it.